Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I want to dye a silk blend alongside a superwash wool nylon blend to compare the way that the final colors look. We are going to be doing a hand-painted-ish technique, so we will be applying approximately the same amount of dye to each of the skeins, but I have observed in the past that silk blends, even with the same amount of dye, tend to look paler in the end. Sort of similar to how a wool acrylic blend, like from Dye Pot Weekly 35, look very similar when wet, but once dry, you can really see the difference um, in there. And part of that is that I think silk requires a lot more dye to have the same visual level of pigmentation. But we'll see what we see today. Before we go and talk more about these yarn bases, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And I am so excited to see how this colorway I have in mind is going to work on two different yarn bases. So the two yarn lines we're going to dye today are Nitpick's Bear Paragon Yarn and Bear Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Paragon is a sport weight yarn that is 50% fine merino wool, 25% baby alpaca, and 25% mulberry silk. I have dyed this a handful of times, but not as much as, say, gloss, which is a silk blend. But in general, I've also observed that alpaca and silk blends do require more acid and time for the colors to absorb. In contrast, Stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. It absorbs color really, really quickly. And maybe a better comparison would have been a non-superwash wool, since Paragon is non-superwash, but uh, I thought that it would just be fun to have something we know soaks up a lot of color uh, for our comparison. Now, I haven't decided I'm going to dye two skeins of Paragon and one of Stroll if I'm going to have this in the middle or to the side, but we will see. To get started, we are going to pre-soak all of the yarn. Now, the Paragon skeins are shorter than the Stroll, which I'm just taking note of now because there was a time when I saw a skein length difference and I got really confused. Uh, but I think I want to pre-soak it for probably at least an hour in plain tap water. And part of the reasoning is that you can see that the Stroll just soaked up water super fast. But the Paragon is probably going to take a bit more time. And maybe I'm going to even want to do a couple of hours, um, just so it's really, really saturated. I'm not going to care about getting an even semi-solid type color, but I would like to avoid small white patches that could result from dry pockets in here. So I'm going to soak, and after a while I'll probably come and press to just try to remove uh, air pockets to make sure we can be as saturated as possible. Today I have some leftover dye in some mason jars from the December 2020, January 2021 Chemnitz Dye Along livestream. These were mixed as approximate 1% stock solutions. So I had measured out 5 grams of dye, approximately between 5 and 5.1 grams of dye, and dissolved it into, I would say, between 450 and 650 milliliters of water. So the most I have left is some Dharma True Black, where I would estimate I have between 2 and 3 grams of dye based on the volume that's remaining. Maybe I have 100 milliliters or about a gram of the teal green, and then maybe between one to two grams, probably around one and a half grams of dark navy. These are all Derma acid dyes, and all of the tools and equipment that I'm using in this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for food. I'm not sure if we're going to use up all of this dye, which I did mix just yesterday morning, but uh, I plan to use a lot of it to create a saturated colorway. And I really don't know if we'll see a difference in the depth that we see in the Stroll versus Paragon, but we might. And so I had debated between dyeing three skeins of Paragon, and then I was like, I may as well throw that Stroll in there, just so that way we can see if we learn anything. Today I'm going to use my four inch deep full-size catering steam pan. And I 
think I want to arrange the yarn. Ugh, I'm still debating if the stroll should be to a side or in the middle. We have no acid in here yet. And so we're gonna do one of my new favorite type techniques. Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna have stroll on an edge. Sometimes the edges get more, but uh, I don't, I, that way we'll have one skein of Paragon that it's not touching. So in theory, uh, like we have, yeah, I, I think I'll do it this way. We are gonna do one of my new favorite ways to hand paint yarn. Um, and I'm doing it in a steam pan because then I don't have to move the yarn and wrap it up. So we will dye it uh, with no acid. Then we're gonna add acid uh, and then we will heat it. Um, but we might let it sit for a little bit to let some colors set. Uh, so it's just, this way saves plastic wrap versus steaming after. And in theory, uh, you can get steamer inserts, but having a steamer insert would let liquid fall beneath for what I'm doing. So we'll see. It's a low immersion hand painting technique, um, but it's just, there's no immersion yet. We'll be adding that liquid with our dyes. Now, the dyes that I have mixed are 1% stock solutions, but I don't want to add them as straight 1%. I do want to add some volume of water to them to assist. And the reason why we have no acid in here is that that should allow, uh, when we pour on liquid, it to go all the way through and to move it a little bit. Because even though my tap water does run slightly acidic, uh, this should allow us to get the coverage we want on our yarn. Huh. My estimation was pretty good. I have almost exactly 100 mils of this teal green uh, left. That it, so it is approximately one gram. I will be keeping rough track of the amount of dye, just mainly because if you want to try to replicate this at home, then you have the recipe. Okay, so now I have dissolved it in about, I guess, 450 milliliters of water. I don't think that that uh, volume is that important. And now I'm coming and pouring it on this edge over here. So my plan is to do the deep teal on one edge, the navy on another, and the black in the middle. And so in doing this, the colors might spread some, but if I go through the stroll, you can see the color has gone all the way through. There might be some areas that are a hint lighter, but the color is making it through all the way in the yarn with some gentle massaging. And this I don't think would be quite possible if we had acid in there. I was rinsing out the cup. I guess I'll just save what I rinse out. I don't think it's gonna take until the yarn is dry. Oh, did that travel? Oh, that traveled far down there, um, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind. It's not crude lines. Things are scrunched up in here anyway, which will sort of shift the lengths. Uh, this kind of colorway will pro could pool, depending on what you're knitting with it or crocheting, but uh, it's not gonna be one that's great for like calculated planned pooling because of the potential variable lengths. Uh, but already the stroll appears more saturated than the Paragon, which I think is extremely visible on camera. Now I just measured out the dark navy and there were about 200 grams. So that is approximately two grams of dye or twice as much of this. And so now I'm debating my original plan was to add the navy down here, but I think instead I might add the navy in here because I think uh, we might go from like light to dark is my new plan. I haven't added it all yet because I want to come and start working it through and checking, especially with the stroll, but already because of the volume that we're adding, that aids in our ability 
to have the dye go all the way through. And if I was hand painting this just on the countertop, you can see that we've got a lot of liquid in here. At that point, I would actually be concerned about some of this dye going too far. I would worry about, or sorry, about some of the liquid running off the counter. But I do want to gently massage it in. And honestly, I don't know what of a difference it could make if we were to do this with the yarn um, hot versus cold. But at least if it's cold, then I can touch it. And I'm not rinsing out the containers in between doing the various sections. So the navy, the area I did was larger than what we had originally done with the teal. So even though there was more dye there, it um, doesn't, you know, it, we spread it out over further. So, um, all right, let's say the black, let's do about 200 milliliters. Um, and again, I'm gonna dilute this. Yeah, so with the black, um, it is, I believe, a darker color than the navy. Uh, but we will see what it looks like after we add it. And I'm going to focus first on the edge. And since we have more of that black dye, we can mix up more if we need to. Because, and I want to be careful if I lift things because I don't want, um, if I lift stuff, I don't want to help the dye spread underneath the yarn, which it might do. Um, but yeah, and I'm trying to not make a mess. My work surface is protected uh, with a um, with a vinyl shower curtain. Now these interfaces are where I do want to play careful attention. And right now I would say it is really, really hard to tell the difference between the black and the navy, just visually. Uh, so that shift might be extraordinarily subtle in the final colorway. But I'm gonna rinse my hands and then, oh, I do see some navy going down that way. We'll start at the teal and move this way just to double check um, how things are, but I'm not, again, super worried about the, s the spread. I mean, I could have added less liquid. What we added probably 150, or sorry, 1,500 milliliters of liquid in here. And you can see we're definitely at a low immersion volume, but we've definitely also added more liquid than the yarn can just hold. So now we need to add some acid. Okay, right here I have a spray bottle with vinegar. And we will add more, but I'm starting off by just adding a layer all over. So it's not measured. But the water level is so low that I do want to help acid move through and I'm coming back with gloves. Now one thing I observed um, is that as I sprayed um, specifically the Paragon, the Paragon is looking paler after it was sprayed. Um, and I think that's because it had really not started to strike yet. But see, moving it now should help uh, move that vinegar through the yarn. And I'm going from the lightest color to the darkest. Which should help distribute that. Now, I, I don't think I've used a spray bottle a ton yet, but it's helping and I'll probably do this one more time. The downside, and oh, does this have measurement? Oh, I should have checked 
to see how much there was. Okay, so right now I've got about 190 milliliters in the bottle. And let's do, I'll do this twice. And I will check and see about how much is in there. Okay, so it went from about 190 to 100 and about 100, approximately 160. So that would mean that going over it twice used approximately, let me think about my math. Um, I believe that one tablespoon is 15 milliliters. So that means that going across this twice is approximately equivalent to adding two tablespoons of white vinegar. So I've added between four and five. Of course, this is all an estimation, but uh, hopefully this helps if you are considering doing this yourself. Now on camera right now, I haven't adjusted the exposure, but what I feel like you could see a little better on camera is that this does, the Paragon does appear to be less saturated. And while the colors are moving through, it is low enough immersion that color I add here isn't going to diffuse all the way down to the other side. There's just not enough volume of liquid for that to happen. Um, the yarn is sort of blocking it. So I think that the stroll is looking darker, not because it had more dye put on it, because that's very consistent all the way down. I believe it is looking darker because uh, it's going to appear a lot darker than the Paragon in the end. But I'm very excited we did this control. So anyway, now I think I'm going to let this sit for 15 minutes. And then I think, uh, yeah, let's let it sit for 15 minutes. Um, not that I think that that's important, but I think I'll let it sit. Maybe I'm, I'm debating. I'm debating. I'd like to add more liquid. But let's go ahead, let's let it sit for 15 minutes. I don't think that that's absolutely necessary, but it's going to make me feel a little better. And in case you're curious about what I'm talking about, feeling a little better, um, it is when I did the rainbow, I don't know, I, I guess I don't want to add more water volume yet. And I'm a little nervous having it on the stove. So yeah, I, I guess that's why I was like, well, sit, it'll be sort of cool that for a little bit of time. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think the 15 minutes is going to do much, but I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, it has been 15 minutes. Not that I expect that this has really changed much. There's still going to be, you can see a lot of pigment in here, but we may as well add another couple passes. Of vinegar. I think I've added more on the stroll, so I'm gonna do. I haven't kept track. I'm not sure if it's perfectly even um, with the amount of vinegar. What I hope, and I'm not planning on flipping the yarn at any point, what I hope I'm not doing is by doing this, adding uh, more pigment onto the stroll. Um, by pushing it around, uh, but I really don't think that that's happening. Um, so anyway, <laughs> now let's go ahead and move this pan over to the stove. Aha! Uh -huh. I just turned on the heat. It's on medium. I'm going to keep a really close eye on it. Um, but the one thing that I did that was smart here <laughs> was that I put the lightest end towards the lightest area of my stove versus the way I had picked it up, I would have wanted to put it down there. So I thought that was smart. And we're already seeing some steam come up. So now I intend, oh dear. I intend to buy some covers and pans that have steam inserts. Uh, that is on my list for 2021, but for now, I am going to cover it because this is going to help trap 
some of the steam in there, which will help heat all of the yarn. And I'm actually gonna reduce the heat to low um, because I can hear it bubbling. And so I want to trap some of that steam in there so it's the water's not evaporating, so we don't risk burning the yarn. But also, trapping the steam in here will help distribute the heat uh, throughout the pan. And so this is not something I worry about a ton. And actually, okay, we're just looking at tinfoil, so I'm gonna hop in front of the camera. I have done some projects where I have investigated using asymmetric heat, and that didn't make, it made some difference when there was a lot of water and the dye could move a tiny bit, but ultimately the difference was fairly minimal. So having the heat just in two little spots on the pan and letting it spread isn't gonna make a huge difference because the dye can't really move in there. And even if it could, it didn't make that big of a difference. So I think that even if the acid was asymmetrically applied, all that would, the big consequence of that would be it would take longer for things to clear. But I think we've got the acid pretty well distributed throughout the yarn as I wave my hands around a lot. Oh goodness. Um, but anyway, I am going to wait, I think 20 minutes but I'm planning to check in to make sure things are uh, still wet. I mean, there's, there's water in there. Now, I'm just gonna wait 20 minutes. I'm gonna trust. The heat's on low anyway. Let's wait, wait 20 minutes. All right, it's been 20 minutes and I have not lifted off the, the tin foil. I did peek under a corner once, but just to show you, it is nice and steamy um, in here. And we're under low heat. Still, uh, I guess we're gonna be uncovered for a second. I'm gonna go get a spoon. I feel like I'm living dangerously because my battery might die. Okay, there is a ton of pigment there. Ton of pigment here. Ton of pigment there. Ton, ton, ton. Okay, so, huh. Hmm. Uh, I guess the thing to do Let's just add more vinegar. I mean, there's lots of pigment everywhere. Um, let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do is recover. Um, then I'm gonna put the heat on, well actually, let's feel, the sides are definitely warm, so there is some heat. But what I'm going to do is raise the heat to high for like two minutes. Um, or by two minutes, I mean like probably about 30 seconds because you can, can you hear the difference? And like, I, mean, I don't know if you can see the steam like escaping there. Um, but sort of jack it up to high for this length of time that I'm vamping. And then I'm turning it back down to not the lowest, um, but like instead of low, I'm at like a one and a half on both of the burners. And both of those burners are the same t size. And uh, I mean, part of me is like, we should add more liquid, but yeah. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and wait another 20 minutes. It has been 20 minutes and I'm still near out of battery. There's so much color in here. I mean, I feel like maybe it could be starting to clear. Um, I do wanna add more liquid. And I'm gonna change the battery pack. <laughs> okay, right here I have a liter of water with a glug of white vinegar. And I'm pouring it in from this end. And it's adding liquid all the way down. I didn't add a ton. Eh, I probably will add all of it. But what we're doing now is we are giving uh, the, the yarn more space to move. And so therefore our dye can access more of the yarn throughout in theory. And 
it means that I am comfortable raising the temperature up a bit higher. Now we might see some navies and blacks spread down um, the other way, just adding a little more down there. But uh, I'm now comfortable turning up the heat to medium heat because maybe we just need things to be a little warmer. Um, but I am going to keep an eye on it and once I start to hear vigorous movement, I am going to reduce the heat again because we are steam setting stuff in here. It's just, it's going to take a while today. Sometimes that happens. We do have a lot of dye. I guess we added about five grams of dye on 300 grams of yarn, which is not too much by any stretch, but it is a lot. So I'm going to leave um, the heat up higher for a little bit, and then we'll turn it back down. All right, it has been 30 minutes. We are very steamy this time. Very, very steamy. Um, moving this aside, coming in with my spoon. And we are finally starting to clear. I do see a tiny bit of some, oh, there's some pigment of pigment left, but let's see down here. Okay, the teals have cleared. So sometimes you do need to get to a certain temperature. Oh goodness, this is very steamy. Uh, for the colors to really start binding. So what I'm going to do is add some vinegar down here and that is actually tapping this bottle of vinegar, which is also something I wanted to do. Um, but I'll do that and I'm going to reduce the heat to low. And I mean, it's still bubbling. Hmm. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is cover it, turn the heat off, and we'll wait 30 minutes and depending on what we see after those 30 minutes, then we can add more heat. But let's turn the heat off and we'll just wait 30 minutes and come back. It has been probably closer to 40 minutes. Let's see, we are nice and steamy still. So that is good. And I'm not worried about it being 100% clear. Um, although that is looking pretty good. That is looking pretty good and that is looking pretty good. Awesome, awesome. So it just needed a little bit more time, maybe a little more acid and water, because sometimes you just need to move things a little bit. But anyway, I am gonna now let things cool completely so we can go wash the yarn. Several hours later, and the yarn has cooled. Now this is not super wash, so I wanna be gentle. But, so far so good in terms of colors being left behind, but ooh, you can see the navy and black. That's really pretty. Ooh, maybe I should just do a navy and black colorway. Ooh. I love it. Ooh, that's really pretty too. Okay, let's go wash it. Okay. I'm now adding some cool tap water. And I'm not anticipating seeing any bleeding because the, the dye bath was clear. Uh, it still appears to me like the Paragon is less pigmented. Um, I just put a little bit, and you can barely see, of some clear dish soap into my hand. And I'm gonna add this to our rinse water, which we could then see a little bit of bleeding. I'm trying to be very, very gentle here, but it's looking pretty good. There's like maybe a bare hint of something from the black, uh, but um, I'm not anticipating many problems. I do, you want to be careful with agitation as I have water running on top of the yarn. <laughs> um, but I think that we're probably gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I'm not seeing any significant color coming out. Um, and so I am going to probably rinse this a couple more times 
put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. This yarn is stunning. It is unbelievable. But you can absolutely tell that there is a difference in the amount of saturation in between our stroll where we have the super saturated well i guess there's one spot i missed a little bit but very saturated black navy and teal and then the significantly more muted tones that we have here on the paragon now one of the paragons is a bit darker so i don't know if this is the one that was in the middle because if this is the one that was in the middle, it's possible that in pressing, we kept sending some of the dye that way. But we do have one that is a bit darker. But overall, even with that added darkness, it still feels more pale compared to the stroll. Now, is this a 100% accurate comparison? No. A better comparison would be to measure out, say, one gram or two grams of dye, have two separate kettles, do the stroll in one pot, the paragon in another, and see what the final colors look like when they've had the chance to absorb all that color. This is not a quant, I mean, I don't know how you do a quantitative comparison of color, but still, this is more of a crude comparison of just the fact that when you have this 50% merino, 25% alpaca, 25% silk, the final color is just less saturated. And I think that if we were dyeing just 100% wool, and if instead of the, the stroll we had, say, wool of the Andes in here, which maybe is what I should have done, had something non-superwash in there, um, I still believe that the wool would have been more saturated. But hey, maybe that's an experiment that I should do again in the future. Just, you know, remember that because of the way we had things set up in the pan, dye wasn't moving from one place to another. In the past, when I dip dyed Paragon and Stroll into a pot at the same time, the Stroll absorbed almost all the color and the Paragon looked completely different just because one absorbs it faster than the other. But in a kettle, there's more space for that dye to move around. So it's sort of an unfair comparison to an extent. Jeremy, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I had so much fun dyeing this yarn and I really hope you're gonna love the beautiful colorway on the Paragon base. If you would like to learn how you at home can become a lab partner in an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, get some shout outs and beautiful yarn dyed in these videos, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Last minute lab partners can pick from a list of videos I've already started to film. And if you look through the description, you can see some really cool hints like the yarn base colors and a little bit about the technique from the video. And then I will film some last minute shout outs for you to insert into the video. And it's a lot of fun. It's a little different from the other lab partner listing where you get to pick the yarn base and tell me some colors to avoid. And then I start filming the video after you've signed up. Uh, if you have any questions about the different ways you can become a lab partner, feel free to message me on Etsy to chat about it. But anyway, Jeremy, thank you so, so much for, again for being my lab partner today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know that I am really enjoying this new to me way of hand painting yarn, which is honestly probably the way a lot of dyers have been doing it all along. And so I'm not sure why I was trying to do things the other way. I guess this is what happens when you, your techniques and everything evolve from your own experience versus taking classes with people with a lot more experience than me. And I believe that I have experience, but I am still learning. I am not a master. I am learning. And part of my whole approach to these videos is to try new things and sometimes I have a hypothesis and sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> but we share it and I share my mistakes so that way we can learn together and grow as dyers and I hope that this is helpful. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and have your notifications on, give the video a thumbs up. The biggest way that you can help support the content here is by engaging with the videos, um, watching and enjoying the content. That is by far the biggest way 
to support Chemnitz and help us grow. Uh, but, you know, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy shop if you're interested in supporting on another level as well. But please know that don't feel bad if you can't do that because watching the videos is the biggest, biggest way to help uh, my journey. I am really enjoying playing with a combination of black and navy and other colors. And this is something I think I want to do a lot more of. I have some ideas and some visions and thoughts, and I just have to decide how I'm going to do it. Um, do I want it, you know, for example, I'm like, ooh, do I want it to be part of a special series or just a Die Pop Weekly episode or maybe a Die Pop PS or just, you know, a fun time lapse? So I just have to decide how I want to film it, but I have a vision for a, a mini collection almost. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> but let me know down in the comments what kinds of stuff you want to see going forward. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching.